and make it about some weird fucking dick sucking bullshit. <sighs> Oh my gosh, Harry Potter hates me! So gender is just a social construct, and believing in God is a crutch. When you mix them together and give them a whirl, what do you got? Atheist T-Girl! Hello everyone, it's Alanis Garcia, also known as Atheist T-Girl. That was Terry Strange. Terry has a YouTube video channel with about 4,800 subscribers. Earlier this week, I did a poll on what type of video I should do for my live video on Monday, and one of the options was TERFs. And I wanted to refresh myself on some of the TERF rhetoric. I've dealt with them, but it's been a bit, so I decided to write, watch some videos about them. And this jewel was one of the ones I watched. Last July was the 26th annual San Francisco Dyke March. There was, in the middle of it, about four or five trans exclusionary radical feminists who showed up to try to disrupt the process. Don't call them TERFs. They get really mad when you do so and you don't want to see them mad. There was a bit of a scuffle between the TERFs and the uh, people in the dyke march and both sides are claiming that it was the other side that was being um, disruptive and fighting while their side was being peaceful. Kitty Stryker, a well-known blogger of feminist issues, including sex worker positivity and trans inclusiveness, uh, decided to write an article about how she believes what happened in Medium.com. I have the link to her article as well as Terry's reaction video linked below. She based her article on interviewing people who were there at the march and saw what happened. As based on what I can gather from this article, she was at the march but didn't see the incident. Terry's video is a response to Kitty's article. And this is my video response to Terry's video response to Kitty's article response. I don't know, I've gone cross-eyed. I'm, I'm a fan of this girl, definitely. And I call her a girl even though she's older than me because like, just is another example of like an arrested state of development going on and immature, cool girl bullshit. So, yeah. So, one of the issues I had with Terry Strange's response was her calling Kitty a girl. I, it's a bit demeaning, and she uses it as a way to just wipe her hands of whatever Kitty says as if it's not important. I have seen women called girls all the time, and it's usually, I hate to say it, Terry, by men who are trying to put down women. I'm not calling you a man, I know you're not. I'm just saying, you are using their tactics, and according to your definition, Kitty is a woman, and so you're using man's tactics against a woman. Basically, lesbians not wanting to sleep with them. No lesbian wants to sleep with a male. So I just want women-only spaces. I just want lesbian spaces to be protected and valued as this resources that they are for women. My oppression is not based on how I feel about my sex, but it has been a result of being born female. Well, the good news, Terry, is that trans women are not men. So you don't need to worry about men in your women-only spaces or lesbian-only spaces. Now, of course, I've got a bias in believing this because I'm a trans woman, but I've met plenty of other cis women, I know you hate that term, who believe trans women are women. And they also believe that a trans woman sleeping with a cis woman is a lesbian relationship. And I agree with them. And you make a lot of talk about no lesbian wants to be pushed by a man to have sex, and I agree with you. And I also agree that no lesbian should be pushed to have sex with someone she doesn't want to have sex with. And if there is someone out there who doesn't want to have sex with me, because she's a lesbian and she doesn't see me as a woman, I am not going to push for her to have sex with me. You are making a straw man saying that uh, trans women want lesbians to be forced to have sex with them. Now I know sometimes there is the issue with the phrase, I will never find a trans woman attractive. 
because it's like saying I will never find a black person attractive. There is such a huge range of trans people that you can't always tell right off the bat or even after a while that they're trans. And so you're putting a stereotype onto them saying, oh, all trans women look like this. And it would be the same with black people saying I would never want to date a black person. Well, what is black? I mean, you, you know what black is, but there is a wide range of how they look. And just saying I'm never going to date a black person is a bit uh, racist. Now, one might argue that, of course, you know, they're talking about the woohoo, you know, the downstairs. And, of course, there are some trans women who have the penis, and some don't. Yet, there are some who have had the surgery, and there are some who have had really good surgeries. And that's just only going to improve. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised in a, f a few years, it might get to the point where you won't be able to tell the difference anyway. And how are you going to then determine if the person you're dating is trans or not? I know that might sound scary to you, but it's just to point out that there is not the difference you think it's there. Dyke is not just a sexual orientation, it's a political identity. It stands for community. It stands for solidarity. It stands for radical fight. It stands for trans. No, it doesn't. Black, brown, queer, not queer. Bisexual, no. Lesbian, yes. Disabled, yes. Chronically ill, yes. Fat, yes. Femme, yes. Butch, yes. Indigenous, yes. Gender expansive, no. Love, it does not stand by erasure, by displacement, by appropriation, by hate before this social contagion. I, I remember before this like phenomenon was, you know, being pushed on us by the liberal media and by fucking like the medical industrial complex and before we were being educated in schools that if you don't like fucking to do traditionally things of the female sex that makes you fucking male, like mentally. No, there is no huge medical industrial complex pushing the trans agenda. Trans people actually have to fight to get medical treatment. I have in my city, there is two doctors who will give us medicine for our hormones. All the others say they don't want to deal with us. I have been mistreated in hospitals for being trans. The, if the medical complex is paying for us or pushing us, I'm not hearing about it. And us trans people are definitely not getting any good treatment out of it for it. So yeah, everything she says here is all hearsay. She doesn't actually provide any evidence. She includes some pictures, but they don't really say much. I will say this, I'm not a witness, but that's just what I understand happened. Something I wanted to point out is right off the bat, she says that nothing you can hear from Kitty is something that Kitty has witnessed. That all of this is just stuff she got from one person or another. And she has no proof for what she's saying. It's not till 20 or so minutes into the video that uh, Terry finally says, Oh, by the way, I have not seen any of what happened either but she expects us to trust her views of it and not Kitty's when her um, evidence is the exact same as Kitty's. I also wanted to point out that uh, she did not include any of the pictures that Kitty included. I'm not including them and I'll tell you why a little bit later when we talk a little bit more about the march. But there were pictures and if you want to see them you can go to the website uh, that I linked below. While Vanessa claims that she needed this device and that she was afraid for her safety, it does seem strange that she would give something that is both support and a weapon to another church. As a woman with, obviously I said at the beginning of this video, I have a chronic illness, that's why I'm recording right now from the couch lazily because I'm sick. Constantly, I have often to use a mobility device to help with walking, especially if I'm gonna do a march or something. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting to me that she doesn't understand the fact that people who use mobility devices can walk, you know, without them. 
It's just that we need them for extended periods of time or that they might help us. You know, it's about, you know, how much you're suffering. So yeah, I, I, can, I can stand and I can walk without a cane, just as somebody who uses a cane. And oftentimes I don't even use a cane. If I'm doing well, I don't need it, you know, because my shit fluctuates. But like the fact that you don't know this or that you would like act like that's not even a fucking possibility and would promote myths about the disabled, it's really fucking harmful. Most people who use mobility devices have some mobility. Most people who use wheelchairs can fucking walk. As far as the march, there's uh, two main incidents that are reported in the article that uh, Kitty talks about and that Terry responds to. One of them was of a protester who ended up strangling a trans woman and had to have multiple people pull her off of her. Uh, Terry sort of just hand washes herself of this saying she doesn't know the person that was the protester so she can't say whether it's true or not. And then there is an incident of a cane. One of the people who was protesting uh, had a cane for a disability she has and somewhere during the middle of the scuffling either she gave the cane to someone else, the cane fell out of her hand, or the cane was pulled out of her hand. And a couple moments later, another one of the protesters picked it up and gave it back to her. And Kitty made a bit of a statement that it just seemed a bit weird that the woman who is using the cane was willing to give up her cane to someone else to use as a weapon. And I think she was also a little worried that the cane was in play and didn't get taken away. And I have to disagree with Kitty on this one and sort of side with Terry on this. Uh, as Terry said, the people who uh, use assistance devices, they don't always have to use them. And just because they're not using it at that moment does not mean that um, they brought it to be a weapon or they don't use it. And that's why the reason why I didn't include the pictures here. There's a couple of pictures of the cane being held up above someone's head and being passed back and forth. And you can't tell what's happening in the pictures. If you're on one side, you would say, she's just holding the cane as a way of saying, heck no, we won't go. And uh, the other side saying she's holding a cane to attack someone. And you can't tell from the pictures. And I don't want to... Uh, push one way or another on that I wasn't there and so I've not included the pictures but I do agree with Terry on this uh, you don't take away people's mobility devices and I just because she wasn't using that at that moment does not mean that she didn't need it you don't have to be a radical feminist to get labeled a turf so it's problematic in that way but also, as a radical feminist, I find it really enraging and just typically misogynistic that they would take my politics, which are about centering women, women's issues, women's experiences, specifically, and fighting against the people doing these things to women, men. Um, you know, they would take that and make it all about this trans issue. I'm just a radical feminist. The term TERF is redundant. Just as a side note, these TERFs. And so she uses this term over and over again, which again, no radical feminist wants to be called a TERF. So there's that. Terry takes offense at being called the term TERF. She says it's a slur. She likes to say that she's a radical feminist and that the definition of radical feminist is um, trans exclusionary so that it's a redundant phrase uh, one I looked up the um, definition of radical feminism just to make sure I wasn't thinking of it wrong that I somehow hadn't been taught wrong and no not really radical feminism is a perspective of fin feminism that calls for a radical reordering of society in which male supremacy is eliminated in all social and economic contexts Radical feminist views society as a fundamentally a patriarch in which men dominate and oppress women. So, uh, 
nowhere in there does it say that uh, trans people can't be part of this because trans women are women. And uh, one of the reasons why we use the terms TERF is to help show what flavor of radical feminism it, we're dealing with. Uh, we also use the term swerve, which is uh, sex worker exclusionary radical feminists. We use both of those terms to help define uh, people who are in radical feminism who agree with us in some of our some of the what radical feminism means but then has a part of it that sort of takes them out of radical feminism uh, I'm calling Terry a turf because you know I see her being a trans exclusionary uh, is she a swerve? I don't know maybe we'll find out but Terry if you really do not like the term turfs I can think of another one we can call you and maybe we can agree on this so that you know you won't be called turfs and there won't be this redundancy that you see so instead of being called a turf we could call you a feminist against radical trans people uh, I, I like that one the FART it, it works pretty well classic this is what i dealt with years ago when i was being harassed by like the sex positive fucks on youtube and they bought they got a whole bunch of community people not even involved in that conversation into that so i mean they're experts at misogynistic spin you know and that's because their feminism is all about selling their you know sex uh bullshit you know basically they're they're sex entrepreneurs they want to sell you you know, their pornography or their book about leaving the sex industry and how great it was, all that bullshit. That's who these people are. So, you know, their agenda is to shut feminists up who actually talk about the ways in which women are harmed by these systems. Like, yes, do, do uh, transsexuals get killed? Oftentimes, yes, because they're working in prostitution by Johns, who I'm against. So I would like to see less transsexuals killed by Johns. I really would. I would like it if men stopped hurting other men and killing other men, too. Oh, Ray, she's also a swerf. A swerf is a sex worker exclusionary radical feminist. They tend to think sex work of any kind is giving in to the patriarchy and they tend to talk over people who were in the sex work industry. I was in it. I know it has its problems, but it's also a person's choice to be in it. They like to point out all the problems that in sex work and say, here it is, see all these problems? That means you need to stop it. But they don't do the same thing with like the fashion industry, textiles, Pretty much any industry, you're going to find terrible things being done to people inside of it. And while you might want to boycott a specific producer of a product or good, you don't generally boycott the whole industry. But they decide to do that with the porn industry. I am so touched that you're worried about transsexuals being killed by men because they're prostitutes. Uh, just a heads up, we also get killed for a lot of other reasons. We get killed for going out on dates and then our date finding out that we are trans. Sometimes even if they knew what we were trans. And even better, they can use that as a defense in court and get away with murdering us. But I'll make you a deal. If you stop calling us transsexuals, we will stop calling you a turf. We'll just go with the F-A-R-T. Okay? I hope she gets everything that's coming to her. That's all I have to say about Kitty Stride. It's been this homophobic bullshit that we've been having to deal with for a long time within specifically lesbian spaces. And now they've brought the conversation to a broader feminist community full of heterosexual and bisexual women whose primary allegiance in their life is to men and who have never really undone any of And she's a sadomasochist, you can tell, because she's totally into mindfucky reversals. Just as a side note, these TERFs are now claiming they're being doxxed, unfortunately for them. Sherry, as you can see above, named all of her crew in a public post thanking them. 
Initially, she also tagged them all, so their profiles were linked publicly, making the information easily available to all. So yeah, she's one of these bitches who's like, you're, you dock dropped yourself. That word potpourri was just a few of the things she had to say about Kitty Stryker. Uh, she thinks Kitty Stryker is a sadomasochist uh, for reasons. She is against Kitty talking about the Dyke March because Kitty is bisexual. And she thinks bisexuals are still putting men before everything else. She uh, just has a lot of talking about Kitty. And that first little quote, uh, thats I hope she gets what's coming to her. That's all I want to say about Kitty. That was within the first 10, 15 minutes of the video. There was another 20, 25 minutes after that of her talking about Kitty. So she didn't quite say that's all she wanted to talk about Kitty for. I asked Kitty Stryker if she had put any response to this video herself because I wanted to make sure there's nothing she wanted to add to it. And she said that her feelings about the whole issue could be summed up with this gift that I've embedded after this clip. Well, Terry, is there anything else you want to talk to us about? Kitty Stryker is a member of the Degenderettes. And if you're familiar with them, like, they're this tacky fucking group of mainly, like, dumb, you know, as they call themselves, cis women, but also, like, transsexuals who, like, you know, do demonstrations with their, like, trans flag color bullshit um, that weird, creepy, pink and blue, baby pink and blue crap. Words to live by, Terry. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe, and of course, leave me comments. I do read every comment I get. Well, I haven't had many so far, and if I ever get really YouTube famous, maybe I won't be able to read them all. But I keep trying to read. I'll just keep trying to read them as much as I can. And please make sure uh, that you hit that little bell so that whenever I do another video. It will bing and let you know that I'm coming up. And thank you.